Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Nishit Kumar and with me is Reshma Tiwari with the evening news. The headlines. President Draupadi Murmu addresses the nation on the eve of 76th Independence Day, says the key word for India today is compassion for the downtrodden, needy and those on the margins. In her first address to the nation, President Murmu says during the last few years, unprecedented progress has been made in developing physical and digital infrastructure. The President says India's newfound confidence stems from the spirit of its youth, its farmers and above all its women. Nation to celebrate 76th Independence Day tomorrow. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to hoist the national flag and address the nation from the ramparts of the Red Fort. Partition Horrors Remembrance Day observed today commemorating the sufferings during the country's partition in 1947. Over 1,000 police personnel awarded the police medals this year. Punjab and Delhi police in a joint operation bust Pakistan-based ISI-backed terror module arrests for terrorists. And Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde allocates portfolios to his newly appointed ministers. And now the news in detail. President Draupadi Murmu has called upon the citizens of the country to gain knowledge about their fundamental duties and follow them in letter and spirit. She said this will take the country to new heights. In her address to the nation on the eve of the 76th Independence Day, the President said that the key word for India today is compassion for the downtrodden, the needy and for those on the margins. The key word for India today is compassion for the downtrodden, for the needy and for those on the margins. Some of our national values have been incorporated in our constitution as the fundamental duties of the citizens. I appeal to every citizen to know about their fundamental duties and follow them in letter and spirit so that our nation reaches new heights. President Murmu noted that the world has seen a new India rising in recent years, more so after the outbreak of COVID-19. She said India's response to the pandemic has been appreciated everywhere and India's achievements in combating the pandemic have been better than those of many developed countries. She said India launched the biggest vaccination drive in human history. We launched the biggest vaccination drive in human history with vaccines manufactured in the country itself. Last month, we crossed the 200 crore mark in cumulative vaccine coverage. In combating the pandemic, our achievements have been better than those of many developed countries. For this feat, we are grateful to our scientists, doctors, nurses, paramedics and the staff associated with vaccination. In her first address to the nation after becoming the president, Ms. Murmu said that India is amongst the fastest growing major economies in the world. India is among the fastest growing major economies in the world. India's startup ecosystem ranks high in the world. The success of startups in our country, especially the growing number of unicorns, is a shining example of our industrial progress. The governments and policy makers deserve credit for beating the global trend and helping the economy flourish. President Draupadi Murmu mentioned that during the last few years, unprecedented progress has been made in the development of physical and digital infrastructure. She said that all the modes of connectivity are being integrated through the Pradhan Mantri Gati Shakti Yojana to enable seamless transportation across the country. Through the Pradhan Mantri Gati Shakti Yojana, all the modes of connectivity based on water, land, air, etc. are being integrated in the whole country to enable seamless transportation across the country. For the vibrancy of growth visible in our country, credit must also be given to workers and farmers whose hard work has made it possible and entrepreneurs whose business acumen has created wealth. What is all the more heartening is that the growth is becoming more inclusive and regional disparities too are reducing. 
Ms. Murmu said a series of economic reforms and policy initiatives have been paving the way for a long-term growth of the country. She said Digital India is creating the bedrock of a knowledge economy. On national education policy, the President said it is aimed at preparing the future generation for the next stage of industrial revolution while also reconnecting it with India's heritage. Ms. Murmu said stress on good governance is at the core of the transformation. At the core of the transformation, we have been witnessing in healthcare, education, economy, as well as a number of related areas is the stress on good governance. When work is done with the spirit of nation first, it is bound to reflect in every decision and every sector. This is also reflected in India's standing in the world. President Murmu said India's newfound confidence stems from the spirit of its youth, its farmers and above all its women. She added that gender inequalities are reducing and women are moving ahead, breaking many glass ceilings and their increasing participation in social and political processes will prove decisive. She emphasized that the country's daughters are the biggest hope for the nation and some of them brought laurels for the country at the recently held Commonwealth Games. At the grassroots level, we have more than 14 lakh elected women representatives in Panchayati Raj institutions. Our daughters are the biggest hope for the nation. Some of them brought laurels for the country at the recent held Commonwealth Games. Of course, India's sportspersons have been making the country proud by their performance in international competitions. A large number of our winners come from underprivileged segments of society. From becoming fighter pilots to space scientists, our daughters are scaling great heights. In her address, the President mentioned that when the environment is facing new challenges, we must remain determined to preserve all that makes India beautiful. She said conserving water, soil and biodiversity is duty towards our children. She noted that with traditional lifestyle, Indians can show the way to the rest of the world. She said yoga and Ayurveda are India's invaluable gifts to the world and their popularity is on the rise all over the globe. President Draupadi Murmu said in March last year, the country began the Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav with the reenactment of the Dandi March. She said that celebrations began with a tribute to the watershed event which had put India's struggle on the world map. She added that this festival is dedicated to the people of India and based on the success achieved by the people. Based on the success achieved by the people, the result to build Atmanirbhar Bharat is also a part of this Mahotsav. Citizens from all age groups have keenly participated in a series of events held across the country. This grand festival is going ahead with the Har Ghar Piranga Abhiyan. The Indian tricolors are fluttering in every nook and corner of the country. Great martyrs would have been thrilled to see the spirit of the independence movement coming alive again on such a massive scale. Extending her greetings to all Indians on the eve of Independence Day, the President said India is completing 75 years as an independent nation. She said 14th of August is observed as Partition Horrors Remembrance Day so as to promote social harmony, unity and empowerment of people. The President said that lessons learned during the period of 75 years of independence will prove useful as we move towards the next milestone in the journey of the nation the Amrit Kal, the 25 years of the celebration of the centenary of the country's independence. She said by the year 2047, India will have fully realized the dreams of our freedom fighters. President Draupadi Murmu said that the country has given its citizens everything they have in their life and people should take pledge to give everything they can for the sake of safety, security, progress and prosperity of the country. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar has greeted people on the eve of 76th Independence Day in his message. He said the Independence Day is an occasion to remember and pay tribute to those valiant freedom fighters whose courage and sacrifice brought us freedom from the oppressive colonial rule. Mr. Dhankar said this day is also an occasion to pay gratitude to the builders of modern India whose hard work and dedication laid the foundation of a sovereign, stable and strong republic. 
The nation will celebrate its 76th Independence Day tomorrow. India is also celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav, marking 75 years of independence. It will continue till the 15th of August next year. The Prime Minister will lead the nation in celebrating the Independence Day from the ramparts of the Red Fort in New Delhi tomorrow. He will hoist the national flag and deliver the customary address to the nation. After being unfurled, the tricolour will receive a rashtra salute. The Air Force Band consisting of 20 men will play the national anthem during unfurling of the national flag and presenting of the rashtra salute. The unfurling the national flag will be synchronized with the 21-gun salute fired by the valiant gunners of the elite 8711 field battery ceremonial. As soon as the national flag is unfurled by the Prime Minister, flower petals will be showered at the venue in Amrit formation by two MI-17 1V helicopters and thereafter the Prime Minister will address the nation. At the conclusion of the speech of the Prime Minister, the cadets of National Cadets Cadet Corps, NCC, will sing the national anthem. More from our correspondent. For the first time, a homegrown howitzer gun advanced towed artillery gun system developed under the Make in India initiative will fire during the ceremonial 21-gun salute. The gun is completely indigenous and developed by DRDO. The gun will stand as a testament to India's growing capacity of developing arms and ammunition indigenously. A special invitations have been given to Anganwadi workers, street vendors, mudra scheme borrowers and mortuary workers on the occasion. 26 officers and 127 cadets from 14 different countries will make maiden entry at Redford as part of and CC Special Youth Exchange Program. These countries include US, UK, Argentina, Brazil, Fiji, Indonesia, Maldives and Mauritius. With Dipendra Anand Kumar, AIR News, Delhi. The Delhi Police has made elaborate security arrangements in the national capital in view of the 76th Independence Day. Special arrangements have been made in and around Red Fort. Over 10,000 police personnel will be deployed in the national capital to ensure foolproof security arrangements. Certain traffic restrictions have been imposed around the Red Fort tomorrow. Eight roads will be closed for general public uh, traffic from 4 a.m. to 10 a.m. Delhi Metro Rail Corporation has also said that parking facilities will not be available at the metro stations from 6 a.m. today till 2 p.m. tomorrow. The metro train services will, however, continue to run as per normal schedule. Azad Bharat ki baat Akashwani ke sa reliving the journey of India since independence over the last 75 years with All India Radio starting 15th August the series will be broadcast on All India Radio 100.1 FM Gold Channel prime time news bulletins and across all its platforms tune in to stay updated with All India Radio Azad Bharat ki baat Akash Shwani Kisat will be broadcast on 100.1 FM Gold Channel, primetime news bulletins and across all of its platforms including the social media. Since its inception on the 8th of June 1936, All India Radio has been a witness to the history of the country including the first Independence Day way back in 1947 to the liberation of Bangladesh to India making history at the World Cup cricket. AIR will be looking back at the historic journey from the birth of a nation to the emerging superpower that is modern India with snippets from its repertoire. These include the voices of legends like Mahatma Gandhi, Homi Jahangir Baba, Sir C. B. Raman, Dr. Kurian Verghis, Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, Pandit Bhim Sen Joshi, Melvin DeMello, Jasdev Singh, to name a few. Every day, one special story will be broadcast and uploaded on AIR social media handles on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. It can be accessed on at Akashwani AIR and at AIR News Alerts on Twitter, News on AIR official YouTube channel and News on AIR app, Facebook and Instagram. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. President Draupadi Murmu addresses the nation on the eve of 76th Independence Day, says the key word for India today is compassion for the downtrodden, needy and those on the margin. In her first address to the nation, President Murmu says, during the last few years, unprecedented progress has been made in developing physical and digital infrastructure. The President says, India's newfound confidence stems from the spirit of its youth, 
its farmers and above all its women. Nation to celebrate 76th Independence Day tomorrow. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to hoist the national flag and address the nation from the ramparts of Red Fort. Partition Horrors Remembrance Day observed today, commemorating the sufferings during country's partition in 1947. Over 1,000 police personnel awarded police medals this year. Punjab and Delhi police in a joint operation bust Pakistan-based ISI-backed terror module, arrest four terrorists. And Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde allocates portfolios to his newly appointed ministers. For quick news, news updates down the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. <laughs> और हमारे विशाल देश पर राज करने का सपने देख रहे हैं पर हम इनके सपने को चकनाचूर कर देंगे निकल पड़े स्वाधीनता के बहुत भाले स्वतंत्रता संग्राम की सुनी अनसुनी कहानियों के साथ स्वराज हर रविवार रात 9 बजे डीडी नेशनल पर अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों आरोप विज्ञापन देना सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो वेलकम बैक यू आर ट्यून टू द इवनिंग न्यूज ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो टुडे इज पार्टीशन हॉरर्स रिमेम्बरेंस डे इट कमेमोरेट्स द विक्टिम्स एंड सफरिंग्स ऑफ पीपल ड्यूरिंग द पार्टीशन ऑफ इंडिया इन 1947 in a fitting tribute to all those who lost their lives due to the partition of the nation and were displaced from their roots the government had last year decided to observe 14th of august every year as the day to commemorate their sacrifice on the occasion the prime minister paid homage to all those who lost their lives during partition in a tweet mr modi applauded the resilience as well as the grit of all those who suffered during that tragic period of our history home minister amit shah bowed to the lakhs of people who suffered the brunt of partition in a series of tweets mr shah said partition of the country in 1947 is that inhuman chapter of indian history which can never be forgotten to observe the day the bjp national president jp nadda participated in a silent march at jantar mantar in new delhi union ministers anurag thakur piyush goyal ashwini vaishnav and other bjp leaders also participated in the march A total of 1,082 police personnel have been awarded police medals on the occasion of the Independence Day this year. 347 personnel were awarded police medal for gallantry, 87 with President's Police Medal for Distinguished Service, 648 personnel were awarded police medal for meritorious service, 109 CRPF personnel and 108 Jammu and Kashmir police personnel have been awarded police medal for gallantry. Seven personnel have been awarded the President's Correctional Service Medal for Distinguished Service, and 38 personnel have been given the Correctional Service Medal for Meritorious Service. Also on the occasion, 55 personnel have been awarded Fire Service Medals. In addition, 46 personnel have been awarded Home Guard and Civil Defence Medals. Preparations are in full swing for the celebration of the 76th Independence Day in Assam. Chief Minister Himant Biswa Sarma will hoist the national flag at Khanpara in Guwahati at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Other ministers will unfurl the tricolor in various districts. Security measures have been tightened in the state as the banned militant organization Ulfa Independent has called for a shutdown in the state tomorrow. Punjab police in a joint operation with Delhi police has busted a Pakistan based ISI backed terror module with arrest of four terrorists ahead of the independence day Punjab police said in a tweet four members associated with Canada based Arshdalla and Australia based Gurjant Singh have been arrested three hand grenades one IED and two 9 mm pistols along with 40 live cartridges were also recovered from the terrorists Our correspondent reports that tight security arrangements have been made across the state ahead of the independence day. Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde today allocated portfolios to his newly appointed ministers in the state cabinet. 
The Chief Minister has kept with him eight portfolios including General Administration, Urban Development, Relief and Rehabilitation, Irrigation and Minority Affairs. The all-important portfolios of Home, Finance and Planning has been allocated to Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis. Apart from this, Law and Justice, Water Resources, Housing, Power and Protocol Department have also been allocated to Mr. Fadnavis. The portfolio allocation has been effected after Governor Bhagat Singh Koshyari gave his approval. And now let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News, Birth of a Nation. India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day. In today's episode, we remember freedom fighter N.M.R. Subbaraman, who was born on the 14th of August 1905 at Madurai in Tamil Nadu. He was popularly known as Madurai Gandhi. An ardent follower of Gandhiji, Subha Raman refused to go to London for higher studies and joined the freedom struggle in 1922. In 1923, he became a primary member of the Madurai District Congress Committee and was elected the president in 1925. He was instrumental in selecting 27 youth from Madurai to participate in the Vidaranyam Salt March in 1930. Subbaraman was elected chairman of Madurai municipality from 1935 to 1942. He also held positions as a member of the Madras Legislative Assembly before and after independence. Subbaraman was deeply committed to the cause of the emancipation of the depressed classes. Through Tamil Nadu Harijan Sevak Sangh, Subbaraman was instrumental in establishing a chain of hostels. Subbaraman also got deeply involved in the Bhudan movement and donated 100 acres of land. <laughs> Subbaraman was the secretary of the Gandhi Works Publications Committee, which brought out Gandhiji's works in Tamil in 17 volumes and many other unique publications. He was instrumental in the introduction of a course on Gandhian thought for the first time in the country and establishing the first Gandhi Museum in the country at Madurai. NMR Subbaraman breathed his last on 25th January 1983. AIR News salutes the great Gandhian freedom fighter. We also remember freedom fighter Godavari Parulekar, who was born on the 14th of August 1907. She was active in the student movement against British rule. She was convicted by the British regime in 1932 for taking part in Satyagraha. Godavari was the first woman law graduate in Maharashtra. After completing her jail term in 1932, Godavari took up social service in the Servants of India Society in Mumbai. She joined the All India Kisan Sabha of the Communist Party of India and founded its Maharashtra branch, the Maharashtra Rajya Kisan Sabha. She was imprisoned many times by the British for her work. <laughs> Godavari led the armed struggle for the liberation of Dadra and Nagar Haveli from the Portuguese rule. She also devoted her life to the struggle of the Varli community and documented the movement in her book, Jeva Manus Zaga Hotu. She founded the Adivasi Pragati Mandal in 1961. Godavari Parulekar continued to work for the betterment of people till the end. AIR News salutes the brave daughter of India.
We also remember revolutionary freedom fighter Harnam Singh, alias Ishar Das, who was executed by the British on the 14th of August 1914. A resident of Sahari, Hoshiarpur, Punjab, Harnam Singh initially joined the British military but resigned from service and left for Canada. He took up the work of promoting national consciousness among Indians in Canada and brought out an English newspaper called Hindustan. The government of Canada disapproved of his political activities and issued a deportation order, but later he was allowed to return. <laughs> Harnam Singh identified himself with the aims and objectives of Ghadarites and frequently contributed articles to the Ghadar paper when it was brought out in 1913. He took active part in revolutionary activities and was convicted in the first Burma conspiracy case by the British. He was tried and sentenced to death and hanged on the 14th of August 1914. AIR News salutes the brave son of India. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Ab har ghar ki chhat par shan se phairega tiranga गुनगुनाए जाएंगे नव विकास के गीत आन बान शान का प्रतीक राष्ट्रध्वज तिरंगा आइए आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव के पावन अवसर पर इस स्वाधीनता दिवस हर घर फहराते हैं तिरंगा और लेते हैं भव्य और सशक्त भारत के निर्माण का संकल्प आइए हर घर फहराए तिरंगा The Indian Army inaugurated a 108 feet high national flag mast at Heather Beg in Patan area of Baramula district of Jammu and Kashmir. Major General S.S. Salaria, General Officer Commanding CIS Kilo, dedicated it to the citizens today. The installation of the high mast was completed in a record time of 30 days. The flag mast was constructed in collaboration with Flag Foundation of India. The project is a part of Har Ghatiranga campaign under the Azadi Kamrit Mahotsav initiative of the Government of India. Kuwait has appointed an ambassador to Iran, both countries said on Sunday. It comes after more than six years after Kuwait recalled its top envoy to Tehran in solidarity with Saudi Arabia after it severed ties with the Islamic Republic in 2016. Ambassador Badr Abdullah al Munaykh handed his credentials to Iranian Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdullahian in Tehran on Saturday, Iran's Foreign Ministry said on its website. And now let us have a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital Delhi, Mumbai and Kolkata are expected to have generally cloudy sky with light rain or one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Chennai will witness partly cloudy sky with possibility of moderate rain or thunderstorm. In the south, Hyderabad, Bangalore and Thiruvananthapuram will have generally cloudy sky with a few spells of rain or thunderstorm. In the northeast, Guwahati, Imphal, Aizol, Shillong, Gangtok, Kohima and Netanagar will have generally cloudy sky with light rain or thunder showers. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. President Draupadi Murmu addresses the nation on the eve of 76th Independence Day, says the key word for India today is compassion for the downtrodden, needy and those on the margins. In her first address to the nation, President Murmu said, during the last few years, unprecedented progress has been made in developing physical and digital infrastructure. The President says India's newfound confidence stems from the spirit of its youth, its farmers and above all its women. Nation to celebrate 76th Independence Day tomorrow, Prime Minister Narendra Modi to hoist the national flag and address the nation from the ramparts of the Red Fort. Partition Horrors Remembrance Day observed today, commemorating the sufferings during the country's partition in 1947. Over 1,000 police personnel awarded police medals this year. Punjab and Delhi police in a joint operation bust Pakistan-based ISI-backed terror module arrest for terrorists. And Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde allocates portfolios to his newly appointed ministers. And with that, we end the evening news. 
Good night.